Hello, everybody, and welcome to the March 27th Trips and Traps. Andy Sterling, joined by Eric Donovan. Five races to bring you on this week's show, and we'll wrap up action for the Inner Track 2013 to 2014. Our next segment will be main track races, uh, but we got five Inner Tracks to uh, to uh, finish off the season with. So we'll start off with the eighth race from uh, March 20th. A two other than allowance optional claimer, Phillies and mares, going six furlongs. We're looking at the rail horse here. Enough said. Enough said. I don't know how much money you're going to make betting. Enough said. Enough said. Going forward, as she was the seven to five favorite here, but she was an unlucky loser in this race, Eric. And it just sort of shows having the rail. I think this is a good example of how having the rail can end up being tricky because in trying to do the right thing with the horse and keep her in contention, it ended up being very much the wrong thing. Yeah, I mean, unless you're the absolute speed or you know you're going to drop back to last, being in the middle of the pack on the rail can be a very tricky spot. And you know, that was the case Jose Ortiz was in here on Nuff Said, Nuff Said. Yeah, I mean, you can see it right here. Jose has already begin to, began to motivate her heading into the spot. And I guess, and you and I were talking about it, he's trying to maintain his position as they head to the break of the turn. The problem is she's not a speed horse. And I guess in retrospect, I'm sure he felt like this after the race, he would have been better off just dropping her back because the two, the eventual winner, drifts a little bit and it's tight in there. It just takes her completely out of the race, wasted some energy and lost a lot of position. Yeah, he would have been better off positioning her right you know, right behind the five horse there who was uh, love to score and then swinging out wide at the top of the stretch instead of trying to keep that position down on the inside so you know he lost a couple lengths there and then he's got to pick his way through traffic here yeah no this is just a, an unfortunate situation and the winner Erod Ortiz rode the winner of this race hot stones got an absolutely perfect trip as she just saved ground and was able to split late in here and you see finally enough said enough says got on the outside now she's in the clear and she sort of has enough time to get there but she's lost enough of her advantage in the race that even though she has this tough loss here she was clearly the best horse in the race yeah I mean she spent you know she spent time on the backstretch being under an aggressive ride to maintain her position and then when that position gets lost you know with that aggressive ride then you know she really uh, she's really up against it there yeah and I mean I guess it's somewhat a, a problem with horses that are closers and sprint races but I guess in this situation just allowing her to drop out of the race would have worked better a tough beat for enough said enough said a horse has been in great form mm -hmm. for trainer Michelle Nevin who just does an absolutely outstanding job with, with her horses her horse has been running unbelievably well throughout this inner track beat eighth race from uh, the 21st is where we'll uh, stop next to say New York Red Philly Amir, two other than allowance optional clamor going six furlongs. Gonna take a look mostly at the three penny mine, the five Irish whisper. Also discuss the six Pegasus Diamond, who got a real aggressive ride here. Yeah, I think this is the most aggressive ride I've ever seen. There is in the blue Cornelia Velasquez. Right inside is, is is Irish Whisper. Penny mine the one, and this horse is gonna have some real trouble in the stretch. You'll have to see that. But Irish Whisper breaks very sharply and has some natural speed with Regime Mirage. But Penny Mine, I mean, I'm sorry, Irish Whisper, I'm sorry, Pegasus Diamond is under an usually strong ride by our rider Cornelio Velasquez and you see Raj is trying to do the right thing and take his horse back as Pegasus Diamond is being sent very hard. Yeah, Pegasus Diamond sent very hard, and the thing that the problem that Raj has now is here comes the four horse. Your time is up, and I almost feel that you know if your time is up, didn't make that kind of early move to join up on the outside there, he would have easily been able to get Irish Whisper to the outside. Now mm -hmm. he's stuck with an inside position. I think that's a very interesting point, actually. Yeah, because the four now the four your time is up is a speed in here, and this is a race that you see sort of eventually melted down. The horse who's moving up on the outside and fourth, there's Pegasus Diamond who will run last. Not surprisingly, Irish Whisper runs extraordinarily well. Should have won this race. Penny Mine. This is a mistake, and we've talked about this a lot with Manny Franco. Time and time again, he over-aggressively sends horses to the inside. There's the first sort of steady behind horses, and we're going to get to Belmont Park. He doesn't need to worry about stuff like this. It'll just get him in trouble. It's going to get worse for Penny Mine. Irish Whisper is even shuffled out more here. I, I, I didn't like her all here. Jason liked her. Mm -hmm. A tough loss. Yeah, it was. She, she ran a really nice race in here. I mean, you know, things changed. Things were a little bit different the dynamic-wise with the pace. I mean, she could have had a much easier scenario here, and probably you know what a one penny mine finally gets clear late and does some some late running in here but uh, you know for me Irish whisper really just a victim of circumstances here and you know I almost even wonder if when she had finally moved to the outside past the eighth pole, if the other horse, the eventual second finisher, Birdhouse, hadn't been there, if she might have gotten her legs under herself mm -hmm. more easily in there. And when you consider how she was forced on the front end, gotten a little bit of traffic and all the things, and she only lost this race by a half length, and you look that uh, your time is up, finished, what, five and a quarter lengths behind her, and it was 19 plus lengths back to Pegasus Diamond, who's virtually ease. I think it makes the effort by Irish Whisper look that much better. Yeah, I agree. I think some things just didn't work out there and uh, just bad racing luck. I, think, I don't think there's really anything Rajiv no. could have done there. I think he wrote it very well. Yeah.
Yeah. All right, now we'll move on to our next race, a uh, two other than allowance optional claimer for uh, four-year-olds and upcoming six furlongs, the seventh race from March 22nd. We're looking at the 11 carried interest. I think we kind of feel like carriers probably ran the best race of anybody, but you know what, Eric, this is kind of an interesting dynamics discussion in general because the eventual winner in this race right there comes from well back in the pack, but I don't think this race completely melted down, though it had a heavily contested pace. You did, and you had the favorite here, the six, I'm stoked to making, that, making it out to the lead in this, uh, in, you know, this competitive event, two to one on that horse. The other horse, the two, comes up down on the inside. Green Grotto, who's been in good form, and Green Grotto holds on for fifth. And here, the horse that you know does the best up attending the pace is the 11 carried interest. But keep in mind, the runner-up Malay is back in the fifth on the outside in the blue. Yeah, I mean Malay's only a couple lengths behind carried interest, and <clears throat> only has beaten three quarters in here. I thought it was a very good effort by Green Grotto. Not so much from I'm Stoke to show that he needs to get be able to control. Green Grotto been coming off a of very good efforts. I mean, good efforts, but being able to control on good inside. And I thought in this situation, he did very well. He didn't break as sharply as he has in the past. <clears throat> he fought it out from that tough spot down on the inside on a very fair racetrack. I thought this was a good effort by him. This race came apart a little bit when Sensational Slam, who was 5-1, to one, got the job done. Carried interest, though. He, to me, at least he showed some guts in here, Eric, because yeah. he's kind of lacked, lacked guts in some of his races. He has. You know, I think that's probably <laughs> a, you know, a good point with carried interest because when the good carried interest shows up, he, he's a pretty nice horse, but there's days when he shows up where, you know, he runs a C or D race and, you know, he's not a factor. I think that, that Rick Violet finally seems to have gotten him into pretty good form. He was a horse that beat Palace Malice when they both met in their debuts, and Palace Malice, one of the favorites this week in the New Orleans Handicap, and obviously a top three-year-old last year, and carried interest didn't get through was not was a one condition until this winter. But this, to me, at least this race, he didn't win. But he, when he's been successful in the past, he's had very good trips. And at least in here, there was some adversity, and he ran mm -hmm. pretty well. He seems to be in good form. We'll see what happens when we get to Belmont. All right, we'll look at the eighth race now from March 23rd. We're going uh, six furlongs here as well. We'll start you off with a head-on. We're looking at the uh, five cubicle queen and the six carries match point. We'll get into trouble at the start. Yeah, we're not. Even I'm done with, with betting on cubicle queen, though she's badly compromised by what happens at the start because Kara's match point sort of ducks in. She may hit the rail. She turns her head. She bounces into Cubicle Queen, takes her out of the race. She's a speed. Cubicle Queen then takes her farther out of the race, as you can see. You see the rider of Cubicle Queen looking over her shoulder. You see the reaction there, and that's Larry Mejias. Uh, Kara's match point, very unlucky. And also, you know, one of the things, and we'll show you this again from the, from the pan to see just how badly these horses were taken out of the race. Um, you see Mejias is turning around and looking. There's, uh, I don't know what's happened. I can't circle these horses anymore. Again. I'll try go. again. Okay. A little temperamental telestrator here. Uh, if Cubicle Queen breaks sharply in this race, Eric, mm -hmm. and she's got extraordinary speed, and she goes along with the seven horse talent and passion who finished last, does it make it easier or harder for Bridgehampton, who's sitting that comfortable second because they're going faster up front, or does it make her have to use herself a little bit more, and does it make the race fall apart more for the end for Kara's match point, who just misses? Um, I don't know. I think Bridgehampton, you know, looks like she's doing her own thing out there. I mean, she's going at her own pace. A little fresh. Yeah, a little keen, a little uh, fresh. for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, more pace probably would have helped out, uh, you know, would have helped out Kara's match point a little bit here, but uh, I, I kind of think that on this day, uh, Bridgehampton was probably the best horse. Bridgehampton's horse is looking to stakes, and no reason she shouldn't be looking towards stakes down the road. Kara's match point finally gets in the picture, way in the back of the pack, and she is way back as Bridgehampton is hitting the quarter pole here, and a, a terrific ride by Taylor Rice. I mean, one thing she has shown is that sometimes a little too calm, but she's calm on a horse, and she didn't, you know, the horse got taken out of the start, but she didn't do any panic, stays in the rail, and this horse puts in some kind of run, and it's hard to imagine had she broken cleanly, that as well as Bridgehampton may have run, that Kara's match point, if she worked out a decent trip in here, she probably wouldn't have won this race. This is some run she puts in. Yeah, she puts in a real good run. You know, I'm wondering too, I mean, just from the, the other way, I mean, she looks like she's fresh down the stretch. The other horses look like they're getting a little bit tired. Do you think that, you know, by the other horses being involved in the race from the start more, mm -hmm. kind of tired them out a little bit? So, you know, I thought at first that her run point. was a little bit more, you know, magnified because the other horses are starting to back up a little bit. I don't know, it's, it's a tricky call for me. It's an interesting point because you know it's like this general assumption a horse gets left a little bit and it takes it a couple lengths out of the race and they make a run like that we all say well if the horse hadn't gotten left 
you can immediately say you could move the horse up two, three legs. It's not as simple as that, is what you're really saying. And I think that's something to keep in mind because, as you said, she didn't do any running for a half a mile of this race, and it wasn't until the stretch that she did the running. Everybody else, at least, or many of them, had been used at different points. And I think it's a very, very valid point that has no discernible, absolute answer. Yeah, uh, they'll have the answer the next time out when she runs, I guess. Well, I think that she's improved for, for Linda Rice. Mm -hmm. Karen's match point will run well. She's been a horse that's been made her own trouble. She made her own trouble here, Eric. I mean, yeah, uh, Cubicle Queen reciprocated after the right. start, but if she had broken cleanly, none of that would have happened in the first place. Yeah, that's very true. So, uh, interesting point. We'll see where uh, Kara's match point does next. One more race to bring you. We'll take a look at the third from uh, March 24th. State bred one of the then for three year old Phillies mile and 70 yards. Looking at the five, Mademoiselle Munwe. Okay, this is Andy's sour grapes race <laughs> of the Trips and Traps session. But anybody that bet Mademoiselle Munwe had a right to be annoyed. First of all, she's a closer. And there was a little bit of pace in this race. The first thing that should have happened with her was the rider shouldn't have been riding her for position. He should have just let her drift back, just like Taylor Rice is doing on the horse behind her, who has more speed and is the eventual winner. I don't know why he's riding her into the turn. Uh, he lost some ground there. He lost position. He's still hustling. What did it get him in here, Eric? Really nothing. I mean, you're gonna be, he's going to be where he was with her, you know, regardless. I mean, it probably would have been better off if, if she was three lines back. Race. Yeah, right. I mean, this is a horse that she wasn't going to win this if the speed held up. And she has to be relying on the fact the speed wasn't going to hold up, which it didn't, Bridget Maloney. And not only does he rush her there, but it's like, even in here, okay, now just relax. But that's not what happens. And you watch, you know, Taylor Rice, who's on the eventual winner of this race, she's got a hold, she's sitting snugly, she knows she's saving ground. And you can already see that Wilmer Garcia, who's riding Mademoiselle Minwee, has asked her to run. I don't know what he's worried about here, but in asking her to run, she'll run, and she'll run herself right outside, out of the winner's circle. Well, it puts her to the stick here as they go into the turn as well. I mean, he's really aggressively riding here. No reason to make this no. wide, four wide move around the turn, just a, a, you know, a crazy move. And, you know, maybe he thought small field, I gotta be close up, you know, they're gonna get away with the slow pace in here, but to make that four wide move around the three ace pole under the whip, I mean, you know, this is a horse that, uh, you know, clearly was mis mismanaged here. If you try this in Gallup Racer and you hit him with a whip with a half mile to go, they zoom ahead of the field, but they don't have much left for the stretch. And not only does she make the ridiculous premium mature move, but she does it very, very wide, and there's Taylor sitting down on the inside with Story Lady, and I'm watching going, oh, this is just going to be so annoying, because obviously, Madame Zellman Wee runs the better race. I mean, she covered so much more ground than, than Story Lady did, as well as making that premature move, and this is you know, just grasping victory, or defeat from the jaws of victory. Madame Zellman Wee was best, but the better ride got the money. One thing I do like here, the matching red gloves and red cap there for uh, Madame Zellman Wee. <laughs> making shy. a fashion statement there, regardless well, of the, the poor Right. He probably knew he should have been in the winner's circle, and he could have shown off that outfit in the winner's circle. Madame Zellman, we, she'll probably like the one turn at Belmont. She might like the turf better. She's a horse that that should have been her day. Whether or not it happens down the road, we'll see. But premature moves don't help. No, they don't. I, I'd like to see her in a, in a bigger field with a little bit more pace where she doesn't have to, you know, where the rider doesn't have to feel like they got to make a move at the half mile pole to be involved. They'll let the brace play out a little bit in front of her and see what she can do. That's how she ran best at Belmont when she broke her back. I agree. Just sit back and let her make a run. We can always use your help heading to the main track turf racing coming soon be back at belmont park in just a little over a month trips and traps at nyrainc.com thanks for watching